Hey guys, my name is Stacy. Welcome back to my channel. This is going to be the books that I'm interested in reading this fall. I made a video similar to this one last year and I actually did really well kind of sticking to the books that I put on that list. It was pretty awesome because generally I'm not good at TBRs as soon as I um, make a list of books that I want to read. I typically don't want to read them anymore, but last fall it worked out pretty well. So the first book or books or stories that I want to mention is anything basically from Sherlock Holmes. I've read a lot of Sherlock Holmes over the years, but there still are some Sherlock Holmes stories that I have not read. And I have a stack of some of my Sherlock books right here. Um, I have not read anything from the case study of Sherlock Holmes. I typically do a reread of Hound of the Baskervilles every year. And if you haven't read this, you have to read it in the fall time. It is the most, well, not the most, I have another one that's even more <laughs> perfect for fall, but number two book that I read every single fall. I also really want to get to uh, The Valley of Fear. I haven't read this one. And recently I picked up this book from a used bookstore this is My Life with its Sherlock Holmes, Conversations in Baker Street by John H. Watson, Watson, MD. Uh, so this is John Watson basically giving like a biography of Holmes and it has pictures in here, like, like antique vintage Victorian photographs to go along with what he's saying to give you a better idea of, you know, the time period and whatnot. So yeah, this was a great find. I'm so excited to get into that. The next one I want to mention is a series that I just mentioned on my channel, and that is the Amish Cupcake Cozy Mystery Series. It's the one um, with the cat on the cover that looks exactly like my cat. If you saw one of my last videos, I talked about it. Um, but this is a series that has, I think, eight or nine books in it. And I basically just want to read all of them. I read the first one. It was super cute. And I just want to continue with the series. The next one is Mist of Midnight by Sandra Bird. This one is supposed to be gothic, mystery, romance, and Christian. I've never read anything from Sandra Bird before, so I, I'm not sure how faith-filled her books are. Um, but this one is set in Victorian England. And the synopsis is, after Rebecca's family dies in India, she returns home to find her identity and inheritance have been stolen. Even though the imposter has already died, people believe Rebecca might be the fake. This next one I want to mention may seem silly because it's not really a fall aesthetic, or maybe it is to some of y'all, but I haven't read it yet, so I don't know. But it is The Hobbit. I read the Lord of the Rings trilogy last fall, which fall I think is a great time to read it because on the first page of the book, it literally takes place on September 22nd, which is the first day of fall, which is Bilbo and Frodo Baggins birthday, which is my birthday. So we all know that Bilbo Baggins is basically the star of The Hobbit. And because his birthday is the first day of fall, I want to read The Hobbit in September, preferably started around September 22nd. Yeah, that is my reasoning behind reading The Hobbit in September. Next one is another classic, and surprisingly, this is one that I have not read yet, and that is The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. I'm kind of shocked that I've never read this book before. I have seen the old black and white movie of it, which is weird, and I'm not sure if it is similar to the book at all. I'm kind of hoping it's not because the movie was like, Ooh, why am I watching this? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm really interested to see how the book plays out. Next one is another classic that I want to read and that is The Castle of Antranto. I think that's how you pronounce it by Horace Walpole. Um, another classic that I have not read yet and it's considered to be the first example of gothic literature. So it's really shocking that I have not read this because I love gothic. I think that this one would fit in beautifully for a fall aesthetic. The next one that I want to get to is this one. I just picked this one up also at the used bookstore. This is The Moor by Lori R. King. This is a Sherlock Holmes story, um, which is about him and his wife, Mary Russell. 
and they get called to Dartmoor where there have been sightings of a spectral coach carrying a long dead noblewoman and there are paw prints around it. So it's like a continuation of the Hound of the Baskervilles. I am way, way excited for this one. One of my buzzwords is the Moors and this, I just can't wait, cannot wait. The next one I'm interested in is Lost in Darkness by Michelle Greep. This is Regency era Gothic Christian romance. <laughs> and this one is inspired by Frankenstein. A lot of the booktubers that I love and follow have loved this book. So it's definitely high on my list. Uh, the next one I want to talk about is called The Strange Man, The Coming Evil by Greg Mitchell. This is a contemporary Christian horror book, and it says a young man loves his horror movies and comic books. His older brother is a pastor. He lives as a professional Christian but has nothing to show for it. A demon comes to town, and he has to put his faith into action. He has to battle dark forces and convinces others to accept Christ. So I thought that sounded interesting. All right, then we've got Boo Who by Renee Gutteridge. I read the first book in this, I think there's four books total. I read the first book last year and I loved it so much. It was such a perfect and faith-filled fall read. If y'all have not read Boo yet, like what are you doing with your lives? It is so, so good. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what the second book is about, but Boo is about a man who wrote horror novels for a living and he moves to a town called Scary Indiana where everything in the town is kind of based around being scary to draw tourists in. And after he moves to the town, he becomes a Christian and he doesn't want to write horror novels anymore. And so the people in the town are angry at him because that will um, affect the tourism to the town if you know their, their big attraction, this horror writer, isn't writing horror anymore. So the book is about the people in the town and their relationships and how the author is dealing with his new faith. It's just so incredible and it's so funny and so heartwarming. It's like a Hallmark movie. It's perfection. Um, so yeah, this is book two and I definitely will be reading this because there's also a Christmas boo book that I would like to get to in December. All right, next I have two books from Dean Koontz that I want to give a try. I've been doing a lot of research into um, authors that are Christian that you might not realize are Christian or authors that have a lot of Christian themes in their books, but they're not categorized as Christian fiction, if that's making any sense. And apparently Dean Koontz is a Christian. He talks about his faith all the time and he really strives to put his faith into his books. I have read some of his books over the years, but I didn't read them as a Christian, so I wasn't really paying attention to any of that. But I looked up a couple lists of some of his books that have more faith elements than the rest, and two of those books that I'm interested in, um, one is called Odd Thomas, which I own this one. This one is some sort of supernatural book. Um, I don't really know the plot line. I don't want to look into it too much, but I do really like supernatural stuff like um, This Present Darkness from Frank Peretti. So hopefully I will like this. This is also a pretty long series. Um, this character, Odd Thomas, there's a lot of books for this and there's a movie, but I haven't seen the movie. The other one is called The Taking and I don't own that one, but that one said it was really good for fall aesthetic and for uh, Christian themes and I want to say this one took place in a small kind of rural community in California and it starts raining and then the rain doesn't stop and then people are wondering um, like what's going on outside and weird things are happening so I'm not sure what the faith elements are in that one but I do want to give it a try another classic that I want to give a try that I'm shocked I have not read yet and this one was on my list Four books to read last fall and I didn't get to it and that is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. I'm not going to go into details of what that one is about. I'm pretty sure everybody knows or kind of understands what that one is but I'm pretty sure it would be considered gothic fiction. All right next ones I want to mention um, both are from Frank 
Peretti. And these have been on my shelves for a really long time, so I definitely want to get to them. I'm probably not going to read both of these, but I would be happy to get at least one done. Um, the first one is Monster. This is about a married couple who go camping and the wife gets taken in the middle of the night and the husband hears sounds of some kind of beast in the woods. This, I'm guessing, would be considered supernatural type of Christian fiction because Frank Beretti is definitely a Christian author. And the other one is House, and this one is written by Frank Peretti and Ted Decker. I was really excited when I first heard about this one and when I found it at like a used bookstore, but since then the reviews for this are pretty low, so I don't have high expectations of this one going into it. I would still like to read it and see for myself anyway, but yeah, I'm not sure which one of these I want to pick up. But yeah, if you've read either of these or both of these, let me know which one you would go with. Then I've got a True Colors Crime series book, and this one is called The Black Midnight by Kathleen Yarbo. I don't know how to say that last name. This is a part of a series of books about historical true crime events that happen in America and a lot of times it's things that are lesser known that don't really get talked about. This one in particular is about a woman who works for the Pinkerton Detective Agency and she works on the case of a serial killer I want to say in Texas and then Jack the Ripper happens in England and I think she gets pulled into working on that case as well because the killings are very similar, something like that. I've read the synopsis for this a while ago and I don't own the book so I gotta find it somewhere. But I've read a couple of the other True Color crime books and I really like those. Next one is Night of the Living Dead Christian by Mike Michalados. Um, This is an author I came across while looking up Christian horror and apparently this book is super funny and it comes after a book that he wrote called my imaginary jesus which i have not read but apparently it gets very high ratings and it's very faith-filled i know the names of these books sound really crazy but apparently they're really good biblically sound books so i'm definitely interested in um, giving it a try this one in particular has vampires and werewolves and things like that but it's supposed to be a Christian allegory type story to where we're like beasts on the inside and we're fighting against our sins. Some, something to do with that. Um, I just thought it sounded really different and really interesting. Another one I came across while looking up Christian horror is called The Devil Walks in Mattingly, Mattingly by Billy Coffey. And this one is about a bunch of teenagers I want to say that are involved with a murder and they hide it or cover it up for decades and then they're living with the guilt of their sin and apparently this is a very good um, story of redemption and very faith-filled so I am looking forward to trying this one out as well and the last one I want to talk about is my favorite optominal read of all time that I read every single year it you can read it in like an hour or two it's super quick so it's definitely worth reading every year and that is the legend of sleepy hollow by washington irving it is so so perfect the way that he describes the dutch colony in upstate new york and the fall harvest and how everybody is creeped out from the legend of the horseman and ichabod crane is such a funny character everything about this story is just so perfect. I love it. So anyway, guys, those are the books that I really, really want to get to this fall. I know I'm not going to read all of these, but hopefully I get to the majority of them. Um, if you've read any of these and you have opinions, go ahead and share those down below. That's all I've got for this video, guys. I hope you all have a fantastic day. I hope you have a beautiful fall and I will see y'all later. Bye.